right, so today I want to talk about uh, solid being groups. <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, so the goal is somehow to isolate the ball behaves class of intuitively speaking complete objects. Um, the point being that uh, in the previous lecture, we've seen that when we compute, uh, when we work in the schedule here and compute homes and X and so on, uh, and start with reasonable examples, and the uh, outcome is also reasonable. But when you <coughs> instead form some uh, string construction, for example, you form some uh, tensor product, I don't know, you take one power series algebra and tensor it with another power series algebra, in condensed to be groups, then, <coughs> I mean, you would probably. I mean, ideally speaking, there should be some kind of completed tensor product where this comes out like as a power series algebra in both variables. Um, but if you just naively form this tensor product in condensed to be in groups, uh, then the underlying thing is this is still just the algebraic tensor product. I mean, this, this here can condense to be in groups. Um, but the underlying thing is still just the algebraic tensor product uh, of these things, which is some um, nasty, indescribable thing. Uh, so, so, so tensor products and like condensed to be groups, they are not so nice. Um, and so the idea is that you should would want to um, define a subclass of complete objects and then, oh, whenever you want tensor product, you would like to complete that and then hope to get a reasonable answer instead. Um, uh, Okay, so, so the idea is from completed tensor products. Um, and so, okay, so ideally speaking, there should be some notion of completeness for light condensed to be in groups. Um, but uh, we definitely also still want uh, uh, that to complete objects, they still have, they form as, as an IC category as so light condensed to be in groups and stuff, so they are still in the being categories. Uh, <laughs> And so, I don't know, I mean, you definitely have something like the integers should be complete, maybe, and maybe the period numbers should be complete. But then if you want this to be a linear, uh, then you also want some kind of quotient of so the periodic numbers by the integers to be complete. Um, <clears throat> but, so the, but this is a very non hausdorff thing. So you can definitely, it's not possible to phrase completeness as meaning that convergent sequences have a unique limit. So first of all, it's not really possible to say what a convergent sequence is other than one that already has a specified limit point in this condensed setting. Um, so an abstractly convergent sequence is not really a notion. Uh, but also, even if there was, you couldn't ask that they have a unique limit because you want these non hausdorff examples. Um, Okay. Uh, and so uh, back in the day when we were first uh, thinking about this stuff, um, I think this was really one of the key questions for us, how to define such a notion of completeness. And originally we wanted uh, one one fixed notion um, that in particular the real numbers should be complete, the peak numbers should be complete, maybe all locally compacted being used should be complete, and, um, but still, something where you can form co-kernels and it stays complete. 
Um, in the end, we couldn't directly make that work. Um, and, but we realized that if we, for the moment, forget about the real numbers and just want a non archimedean theory, uh, then there is something that works quite nicely. So, uh, uh, so turns out. Uh, it's difficult to find a notion. Oh, where's the real numbers are complete? Um, but there is a theory that works good well uh, for all non Archimedean theories. <clears throat> and <clears throat> later we will recover the real numbers, uh, but this is more than a different story. <clears throat> and so today I want to talk about a series that works well in the non comedian context. Um, <clears throat> and uh, originally, we, we did these things very differently, and so today I will actually give a presentation of the theory of solid being groups that's very, very different from the one you will find in this first lecture notes. Um, and it's a presentation that really only works in this nice way uh, in the light setting. Okay. But in the light setting, one can base everything on the following idea. Um, M should somehow M with the of being group. Could be in some sense non archimedean complete. <laughs> if any no sequence in M, it's stumbleable. So uh, one basic nice fact, uh, non archimedean analysis is that sequences are summable if and only if they go to null, to zero. And you can just try to turn it into a definition. It turns out that this is actually a definition that makes uh, very good sense. Uh, so let me try to uh, indicate how you formalize this idea. Um, uh, so here's a formalization of this idea. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> so let me consider uh, this projective object that we had, um, just free guy on the null sequence. <laughs> All right, so we wanted to say make some condition on null sequences, so uh, this should play a role somewhere. Um, and then we call. Uh, that P is an internally projective object. <clears throat> so let me recall what this means. Uh, one way to say what this means is that if you look at the internal home function, 
Takes any light connection being good. So light connection being good. Um, and well, what does it do? It takes some light connection being good and it sends it to the light connection being good. That this is the one that takes any light profile set S uh, to the home from P10 to B is on S. So the underlying, so if we evaluate this at star, uh, the points, and I just get home to them, but then I've enriched this back into the log, and it's being good. Um, and then the thing is that this functor is actually exact. Uh, but also it preserves all limits and poles. Well, it's a, some kind of right adjoint function, so definitely can use this all columns, but also all columns. Because actually, these are complex objects. <clears throat> right. Okay, and uh, okay, so this will become important in a second. And now we want to um, phrase the condition that uh, <clears throat> any null sequence is summable. And one way to do this is the following. So uh, let me write something down and then I will unravel. <laughs> uh, consider the operation F, uh, which is the identity minus the shift map, uh, which is an endomorphism of C. So completely the sense the generator given by some n to n minus n sub one. Um, and then we make the following definition. The light density M makes solid. Um, yes, the map induced by F on the internal home. Yes, I'm not <laughs> uh, so this is the basically the space of all six functions and zero and one and so on. <laughs> and what does an upper star do? Well, if you just translate the function out there, it just sends such a null sequence to a new null sequence, which is m zero minus m and two. And what would the inverse be? The inverse should send a you know, sequence here. Uh, well, you should be able to recover m zero as M0 minus M1 plus M1 minus M2 plus M2 minus M3 and so on. Because when I mean, my telescope in, all right, and like it's a multi point zone, uh, which should be this one. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if there is an inverse, the inverse has to be thought of as an that takes a null sequence and produces a new null sequence where the first term is just the sum of all of them. <laughs> uh, so this is one way in, to phrase the condition that any null sequence in M is summable. Uh, it's a very structured way of saying this because maybe, maybe to say that you would only have to say it on the actual home, not on, on the internal home, but it turns out to be much better if you ask the condition on the internal. Okay, and so the goal of today's lecture is to somehow understand the theory of solid being groups. And uh, in the original approach, proving that this is a body F category was actually the last thing one could really prove. In this like setting, it's actually the first thing one can prove. Um, If you consider uh, the subcategory of solid being groups, then it's actually uh, an immediate subcategory. Uh, stays under kernels, four kernels, extensions. Um, all of them say cool, let's see. Um, even in all <coughs> internal homes, and in fact, also internal X if you want. Um, uh, uh, this also contains some objects. It could be trivial, but it's not. It contains the integers. And once it contains the integers, everything you can build by limits and columns and kernels and whatnot will contain all of this. Um, it's not everything. Um, uh, look, look. So it contains the reals? It does not contain the reals. Because of course the real is just wrong. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, because there is not uh, right? only the Wikipedia, yes. Um <clears throat> yeah, so it's certainly the non idea in this condition of current Um and uh so a jargon that you will introduce later, this proposition basically tells you that this is an analytic ring structure on the integers here. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, previously it was somewhat, I mean, in the way we set up the theory previously, it was a bit of an art to construct analytic ring structures because there were a lot of things you have to check and none of them were kind of easy to guarantee. And so then basically only two examples we constructed, which is the solid liquid ring structure on the integers and then there's this liquid ring structure on the reals and some related rings. Those proofs were pretty hard um, and they were really very hard handcrafted things. But it turns out that because of this internal projectivity of P, it's not trivial to construct analytic ring structures. Because like for any endomorphism of P, you can ask such a condition, and all, all this will come for free. Um, I mean, yeah, so 
let's just try to prove that it's, for example, stable under kernels. Well, then they have a map, m to m prime, where this happens, and then you want to know that for the kernel it also happens. But the internal home from p is an exact operation, so it just preserves the kernel. So, of course, the same condition is true for the kernel. <laughs> the same for the core kernel. Or if you have an extension, then that's true. You get isomorphisms on the outside, so you get isomorphisms on the inside. Also, because you have stability under kernels and kernels, it's automatically in the being category. Um, with limits, is also clear, and with co-limits also because just the internal home uh, has these properties. So it, it, it's all for free. Uh, uh, all for free. Because T is internally predicted. What about the internal home? Is it an X, internal X? This looks more difficult. It's also trivial. <laughs> no, because internal home, you can also pull that over, right? I mean, just by junction. Ah, but then you need only an internal home on the second variable. I mean, you need only. Okay, let's, let's try and find a home because maybe I didn't, I just wrote that down on the board and I didn't write on my notes. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's complex. No, it's um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, here is stability under, let's first do an internal moment and see whether uh, it works for the internal X. So let's say M is solid. And let's say any, actually any condensed in the anchor. What's the name of the anchor? that we want that the internal home uh, from M to M is solid. Okay, I see, because you can permute. Uh... Yeah, let's, let's write it down, okay? okay. <laughs> so what is this? In, so for this, we have to prove something about this guy that at upper star gives an isomorphism. But uh, by tender homage junction, that's also the internal home from P tender and M to N. But then applying, I mean, tender part is computed, so you can commute the two factors and it becomes the internal home from N into the internal home from P into N. But then if you come to isomorphism here, so of course if you apply another function, it's still a stationary. Um, <laughs> and if you look at internal X, then uh, because uh, internal home is from P is exact. Um, you also have that the internal home from P into the internal X will also just come out as the internal XI from the center product. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, as the internal XI from N into the internal home. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, this is something extremely general that when you just enforce such an isomorphism condition on the internal home from P, uh, you get these very good stability properties. Okay, so everything is for free except possibly when there's any object that satisfies it. Uh, but okay, so you can just compute that the internal home from, from C into the integers is just a direct sum of copies of the integers because if you have a null sequence in the integers, then it must be eventually zero because the integers are discrete. Okay, okay. it takes a little bit of a variable to see that there's really into internal home, but that's true. Um, again, by some junction, if you want. Um, 
And yeah, and so you, if you just compute what identity on a shift stuff here. Uh, so you want to show that any null sequence is summable, but any null sequence is eventually zero, so it's easy to sum it. <laughs> Um, uh, before actually <coughs> focusing more on the specific example <coughs> of like this completeness condition, let me draw some further corollaries that are uh, good to know. Um, so just by some abstract adjoint functors here, uh, this means that there, this inclusion here will automatically have a left adjoint, some kind of completed function. So a bunker that takes any large dimension being used to a solid one. <coughs> so this is what we call solidification. And so this is characterized by the property that uh, for all solid ends, so what if they jump really good? means that for all solid ones, the home from end to end is the same thing as the home from two stations. Yeah, so it's the completion. Does it have to make the right adjoint as opposed to the left? That's the left adjoint to the inclusion. Because yes. instead of here, I'm using the inclusion. So I should write some kind of functor here, which is the inclusion functor, because this is home. Uh, no, no, no. My, my, my question is that uh, so ah, you, you said that it follows from the adjoint factor, sorry, but you said that the, it is supposed to. Right. It's also stable under all columns. It also has a right adjoint, uh, which I've never considered. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. But there is some also this, something just more this solid submodule. I guess. Um, okay. Uh, but not necessarily submodule, but it's more this solid thing. Okay. Um, Uh, right. And moreover, uh, solid uh, requires a unique uh, metric on order tender product. Solid tender product. Um, making the solidification uh, symmetric on order. So concretely, this is just if you have two solid being groups and you want to form the tender product, you first form the tender product with condensed being groups and then pass through solidification again. Um, there's a little bit of unraveling to show that this uh, is really is some value we have to operation. Um, but the key thing for that you need for this is that the class of solid modules is stable on the internal.
Um, and okay, maybe I should say this the column is preserved. The unique competing result is required. And by symmetric mode of mean lab symmetric. No, it creates symmetric mode. Uh, uh, let me just uh, 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 so the existence of solidification is just it's just an instance of uh try to jump jump here. Uh, uh, So basically, if you want to have a left joint, you should commute with all limits. And then under very mild set theoretic assumptions, it's also implies that the left joint exists, and uh, they are satisfied here. <clears throat> um, and uh, then for the symmetric logic tensor product, um, well, we define. And I mean, this all has to be the case. You take just n center n and condense and then solidify. Um, and we want um, that it's symmetric monoidal. So, what we want that for all m and n, which are just condensed being groups. Uh, if you first send with them in condensed being groups and then solidify, then this match isomorphically uh, to first solidify both individually, then tendering back in condensed being groups and then re solidify. Um, and to check that, uh, you check, um, like this is a solidification is a left joint. So to check that there's an isomorphism, you check that the homes into all uh, uh, for all m the the and then uh. Um, so it's like on the right. So we uh, care about the internal home from and so the patient and then so yes, um there's also the home internal home. <clears throat> but this guy here is still solid. So uh, it's enough to map M. Okay, but then then we uh, do against home tensor is juggling, so it's also the home from n qualification to n tensor. Yes. But this guy is also solid. Uh, so it's also from n to the Yeah. <laughs> Not Thank you. 
Okay. So, uh, so we have a very nice category. Uh, um, it requires its own transfer processing one, but now we would like to understand what it actually looks like. And actually, one uh, thing we actually also need uh, <coughs> uh, is to again try to understand how it interacts with the real numbers. So we already said that the real numbers are certainly not solid. But actually, something stronger is true. Namely, the real numbers do not admit any non zero maps to anything solid, or equivalently, so the solidification of R is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, for this, note that our solid is a ring. Because uh, the, re the real numbers are a ring, and then if you solidify it, stays a ring for this solid ring structure. And so to show that the ring is zero, it's enough to show uh, that one is equal to zero in the solidification of the reals. And now you somehow want to make use of the fact that someone in a, in a solid being group, you can uniquely form uh, sums of null sequences. And uh, so there are lots of null sequences of real numbers that are not actually summable. And so you would expect that using such divergent sequences one can produce a contradiction like that. It actually took Dustin and me considerable effort uh, figuring that out. Uh, but just yesterday, I and then also Cole found an argument. Uh, um, so here's, here's the easy argument. Uh, so if we consider the null sequence. One, one half, one half, quarter, 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 and so on. Uh, I hope you can guess how it continues. So you take one over two to the n and you take each one two to the n times. Um, this is a null sequence in I. I.e., it's, it's really bad from, from P into R, right? <clears throat> and then in the solidification, uh, we have key mapping to R. Um, we have this endomorphism P here. And when you compose further to the solidification, so we have this map. And then there exists a unique map filling this diagram because we ask that the solidification uh, forms become equivalent. Uh, so we can uh, uniquely find such a null sequence and solidification, which intuitively speaking should be the thing starting, the sequence starting with the sum. So in particular, if you uh, restrict here via the inclusion of zero, um, <clears throat> you get a map from D to R, i.e. an element of R solidification. So, uh, And so the image of the old one is called X. And so the, intuitively speaking, X is, is the sum. And then let me just do the manipulations here. So the claim is that X is one product. 
So that's the one. Um, uh, and why is that? Well, let me let me just uh, do it in terms of those formulas, and then there's a little bit of unraveling that you can really justify this in terms of the universal properties. So first of all, you can pull the one out, and then just take this other infinite term. <clears throat> but then <clears throat> you also allowed before you take an infinite sum, you're allowed to always sum two adjacent elements. Um, that's some finite character operation, and you can check that it must give you the same answer. So uh, you must get the same answer if you first sum two adjacent elements to start with. But then this gives you one plus a half, plus a half, and so on, which is one plus it. Okay. <laughs> uh, and the corollary of this that we will use, and that uh, similar argument was used at the very end of the last lecture, is that uh, this implies that not just the solidification of the real zero, but any light condensity group that is in R module will also solidify to zero. So, If you have a large condensing group, uh, it makes an R muscle structure. Then the solidification is zero. Or even, even, even something slightly better is true that uh, all XIs of them against something solid. Okay. Not just the math, but even the X. Is there argument really about um, all fields of characteristic zero, like Q or anything else? Hmm? Sorry, what? Is there argument really about like Q and any other kind of field of characteristic zero? No. Oh, well, Q as a speed? Field is definitely allowed, and it's definitely a problem with the disease, right? So it's really about the topology you put on the reals. And like if you would endow to the rational language with the subspace topology from the reals, then yes, but I mean, for an abstract characterization zero field, they are perfectly fine. <laughs> so, so the solidification is right exact as in that joint, but not. Exactly on the other side, I suppose. So, can right. you consider five factors of solidification? You can consider the derived factor of solidification, and then really what I would like to say here is that the derived solidification of them. One way to say that without talking about derived solidification is to just uh, talk about the exclusion. Where are you using this topology? Is R? Well, just to say that this is a null sequence in R. Um, uh, so why, why is it a story truth? Um, well, if this is an R module, then you can resolve this. There's a sequence where you tender with R here. And then tender again. <laughs> and then, uh, for example, if you solidify, uh, Uh, oh, sorry, I should take the derived solution. Yeah. If you solidify, it's at least right exact. So, um, you see that M tensor R solid will project on the solid. But this is in solid tensor R solid, but this factor is already zero. So, it's in the part. That's true. Mm. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, if you do a spectral sequence argument and join the, the, the X groups here vanishing reduced to the X groups from the reals vanishing, but these X groups from the reals, they, they are modules of that. I mean, actually, a different way to say this would be to observe that <coughs> all the internal XIs of N against them stay solid. They will be modules of the unification of R. <coughs> but the unification of R is actually zero. So any module of R is uh, we're also using. So when you compute the internal uh, home X I, since you don't have enough projectives, the classical approach is to use injectives. But what about then they're no, no, no longer solid? So uh, how does one read this? I don't know if they're solid, but of course, if you have enough, if you use it. Whether you compute them in solid or? Uh, um. Uh, so, yeah, I, was, I mean, the internal X I was referring to here, they are the ones in condensed being groups so far. Okay. But if you compute them by, by injective resolution of the right hand side of the solid argument, then how do you prove that they, that they are so, that they are, uh... <laughs> if you have, if you compute them by resolution of M, then before, by what we proved before, the, the, all the internal on and so on are solid. But if you are obliged to compute them by... I think it's okay. I mean, this is definitely a module over R, right? But it's also solid. Why is it solid? Because the internal X are against something solid are always solid. That's something I previously said. Okay, but it doesn't follow complete R. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so, so everything that lives on real numbers is completely destroyed by this sort of thing. Okay. Um, okay. Um, right. Uh, so let's try. Uh, but on the other end, like subjective numbers and so on, you get them by a limit of discrete things. So e everything that's pro discrete uh, is definitely allowed. All right. So the so next goal is to compute the so solidification of the free diagonal system. <clears throat> and so the idea is that uh, when you solidify, you need to uh, join lots of new elements because you get the, the null sequence in, uh, in P, but then the null sequence is summable. So some of the sequence one, 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 one must now also be in there. Uh, and so on. And so you expect that there are lots of new elements, and one way to uh, make this precise is the following level. Uh, so that, that's considered the valid product of focus of heat. So this is a union of all integers of the product of uh, like the integer interval from minus n to n. Okay, so, so it's a subspace of the whole product, but the subspace where uh, of the subspace of one. <clears throat> okay, so then there is a map, uh, a null sequence here, which is given by uh, the sequences that are just uh, non zero and only one term. Yeah. So n in here maps to the, the same as everywhere zero, 
And then in the end, Scott is sworn and everywhere. Is in it. <laughs> uh, then actually, the, on solidification, just becomes hard for the business. And actually, uh, so I didn't talk about direct solidification. So I would like to even say that not just on solidifications, but on derived solidifications is an isomorphism. And again, a different way of stating this is to talk about X proofs against solid things. Uh, and all. For some of this, that the solidifications agree means that the homes against any thing solid agree. But in fact, all the higher x degree two. Sorry, I cannot read what you wrote uh, just left of the P. Is it the map from which sends N to the... I mean, in here you have some of those, so to say, the basis vectors that are everywhere zero except in one point where they are one. And then you just ah, send okay, okay. a sequence of these basis vectors, which is a no sequence in here because uh, the sum has a topology of point-wise convergence, of point-wise convergence. You send N to the uh, only the nth, compor nth co coordinate is one and the else is zero. Yes, I think. Okay. Um, I mean, note that this makes p quite a bit bigger because the underlying the being group of p is actually accountable in the group. Because you have some only long finite sums of these countable many basis vectors. But this is a very large uncountable thing. So uh, got quite a bit bigger here. Um, the proof is some nice diagram. To the form diagram. And okay, maybe I won't do all the compatibility checks, but uh, let me just We'll draw the relevant diagrams and then I leave a little bit of diagram taking to this. Checking that maps are valid findings. So we're trying to make good use um, of this uh, that um, when you have solid domain groups, uh, that the internal homogeneous. In, in other words, that if you are tender with something, uh, then it's close. Something like that. Okay, so we have this, um, and then we have to map so this is final product, <laughs> which is a okay. So what are the maps here? Um, so giving a map from p ten or something to here corresponds to map from p to the internal home, meaning it, it's it corresponds to a null sequence in the internal home. And so we, to give this map, I have to give a null sequence of n homologies. And so this here corresponds to the null sequence of, oh, sorry, let me continue writing over here, um, of maps from the final product uh, to itself. Um, which are uh, uh, projection to the coordinates greater than equal to n. So. 
So in other words, it's in the first n, co n coordinates, it's a zero map, and the other one's the identity. <clears throat> and so then what does this composite do? Um, this composite here, uh, it also corresponds to, uh, let me try to describe this, this composite here, this corresponds to the null sequence of nets on the product itself, um, which are just projection to one fixed coordinate, right? Because if I take, I mean, this is some of the difference between two consecutive maps. What's this doing here? This map? Um, and so if I take the difference between two consecutive maps, uh, then I only have one fixed coordinate that remains. Um, Uh, but the thing is that the projection to the nth coordinate, it actually factors over the integers, right? So in, in each, uh, when, I, when I fix one n here, then the corresponding net is just project to the integers and then back, back in. But this means that actually all of, all of these maps uh, that are parameterized here, all of them factor over the subspace P. And so uh, this means, yeah, so that, this means that this composite map somehow vectors over this, which is a subspace here. So this is actually the part where I actually need to use that I take a bounded product because of if the corners would stay unbounded, I wouldn't actually get this vectorization complete. Okay, so what's the idea here? Um, you have the identity endo functor here, and she writes this as a, as a sum uh, of the null sequence of endomorphisms. And this null sequence of endomorphisms is, a, is uh, the projection to the individual coordinates, right? So the identity endo functor here is the sum of project to any coordinate and then and that back in. But all of these endomorphisms that you're summing, they all factor over the subspace T. Ah, and there's one interesting thing I should say is that because of <clears throat> because of the first match that I have twice here is really just the identity. So if I project the corner straight up to zero, I'm not doing anything. Uh, this actually means that if I am back at the zero coordinates, then actually uh, this map here is a split surjection. Okay, and so then I can solidify this diagram. And uh, okay. <coughs> I guess I have to rewrite it. Um, Okay, so you have uh, this diagram. Um, <clears throat> where now this here is an isomorphism. Because F solidifies to an isomorphism just by definition of what solid means. 
and uh, solidification symmetric and also. Uh, like both of these maps become an asymorphism of the solidification so tend to become <clears throat> Okay, but now now this means that this map here actually is a return, uh, is a split projection because you can find an inverse by first going here, then going here, and then going here. So this is actually a split projection. Uh, which is almost what we wanted to prove. I actually think it's an isomorphism. Um, and to show that it's an isomorphism, you have to show that when you circle nodes around this diagram, you get the identity. Uh, and this is another diagram chase that uh, maybe let me not do it. It's not difficult. Yeah? So, I'll put the resolving. Uh, I see, okay. Um, right. And so this means that uh, this actually becomes an isomorphism of the solidification. I claim something slightly strong in the agreement of texts. Uh, but actually, the kind of same argument works if instead of applying solidification to this diagram, you apply x against any solid guy. It just becomes more confusing because all the arrows go the other way, but uh, the argument is the same. Okay, same argument. Works. Or if you want, it, you could also derive solidification. So there's a derived solidification function, um, and then the same argument just just true on derived solidifications. Is uh is now that you solidified, is P solidified a, a ring object now? It will be, but it's not obvious. Oh no, no, sorry. Uh, I think P itself is already a ring object. It doesn't have a unit, doesn't it? Or... Well, just zero if you want. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, you it should somehow be something like the power series algebra. Uh, so the free yarn will signal. Like, wouldn't the Identity be one. Hmm? Wouldn't the identity be the constant sequence one, which is not? Uh, I'm not sure how you want to doubt the ring structure. Ah, uh, so you you some component wise. Uh, yeah, exactly. Same. Um. Uh. I guess. So, yeah. Uh, but in fact, once we're here, we uh, can actually compute the solidification with another lens. So that if you take this solid product, it's a little Then the bottom product maps into the whole product. <laughs> But I mean, this is already solid, right? I mean, there's here we don't have to do anything. <clears throat> and uh, it's I solid. <clears throat> uh, it's also true in this case. Okay. Uh, And actually, this is the case where I do need uh, a little bit of this X1 business because it's actually, uh, so we have this a sequence here. We have the strong trunk of top of the integers, and then some of the full product, pretty large space. And then we have this funny closure.
right? Some weird non-separated guy, but whatever. Uh, um, and so what we have to see is that <coughs> all I equal to zero and call it n, then this guy doesn't have any extra. And uh, now, of course, I've carefully planned my lecture. Uh, so now we know already one class of examples where the sentence, which is anything that admits a module structure with a real number. So the claim is that uh, this guy is a non module which seems surprising, first sight. But it's, it's so why? So actually, there's a different way to write this. It's also the same thing as a product of copies of the real numbers, module with the product of the bounded product of the copies of the numbers, where I mean, this is defined the same way as an increasing union of product of intervals. Um, and why is that? I mean, uh, because the difference. The difference between these two portions is uh, when A to B to C to D is the same as like first taking ratios here and ratios here. Um, so what is the ratio here? Uh, or ratio or whatever. Uh, Here, the, the, uh, the ratio between these two is, of course, just a product of sums of R and Z. Um, but the ratio here is also the same thing. <coughs> because if you want to subject onto a product of circles, <coughs> then, of course, you can keep the three minutes down. You cannot keep them all between zero and one. So this definitely subjects onto here. Uh, but then the kernel is obviously just bounded sequences of integers. So uh, if you want, you can draw some kind of three, like three diagram uh, of solid sex sequences uh, justifying this. So like solid sex sequence here, solid sex sequence here, and then you know, and then the core kernel just uh, gives you the size of this. Right? And so this one is visibly in our uh, what also. Uh, So a parallel from this uh, discussion <laughs> is that uh, actually the solidification of P is just the whole product uh, copies of V and the exclusive degree. So then, um,
Uh, we're here I'm on the right. I'm taking the X groups from A of shows vectors. So all the X groups I'm taking are currently still changing from the engineering groups. Yes. Uh, uh, noting that, I mean, of course, this is zero, well, I think it's zero because let's give us a projection of that. Uh, so, in particular, uh, we recover that xi in condensity in groups from this product of topics of z to say uh, m, which is a discrete being group. Um, is just a direct sum of copies of n by equal to zero and zero in positive distance. So this is something that I also proved at the very end of the last lecture. And actually I imagined it would be an input into today's lecture, but then now actually one can present the argument so that it's the corollary here. So on the previous board, did you yeah. use the like feature that came to the product for exact? Yes, I did. Uh, well, I mean, they, they're also expect in all condensed viewing groups, but uh, yes, but it doesn't use the different products I expect. I mean, also, when you actually want to justify that this method is surjective, I mean, it's actually, if you think in terms of uh, sheaves on topological vector spaces and the open cover topology, that wouldn't be true because it's not true that uh, you can find open subsets of the internet product of properties of the circle where it splits. Because if it splits, then you're in a contractible space here. So uh, if it would split, you could somehow contract things. But any open subset here, it will somehow still contain, like a unit, something like a Hilbert cube. So you will only change finitely many corners in an open subset, but then contain everything else uh, further down. And so you will still contain infinite products of circles here. So you, they will never split. So you will actually do need um, some these kind of infinite refinements. Uh, Gets a so, <clears throat> so this is an independent. <clears throat> so another corollary of this is that uh, if I take the uh, product of topic of Z and then form the solid kind of product with the product of topic of Z, and so some of the five and kind of product of Z. <clears throat> um, uh, why? I mean, this is just given by noting that. The P, uh, but uh, P, then the P you can check is isomorphic to P. Um, and basically, <laughs> there's a free guy uh, on like a, uh, a grid of n times n grid of elements that all don't be converged to zero, but then, well, you can just enumerate the grid. Same thing with free guy and all sides. Like it's just, I mean, implicit here is maybe sometimes objective the input. So in particular, like for instance, in terms of like one way to think about the part of the Z is <coughs> power series algebra. So in particular, if you tend to two power series algebra together, uh, you get the power series algebra. <laughs> And maybe up there, I should have noted that. So some of the case that's a product of n, this is some compact projective object. No, it's not.
All right, so uh, we understand quite a bit. Uh, we don't yet necessarily understand all the objects in solid being groups because there are other generators in life when being groups, namely these zero join assets, where right? assets any type for finite set. And so we could wonder uh, what they solidify to, but this can also be understood. And if the any life is good. <laughs> then the system that uh, from the free down must be towards the other half. Yeah. And you think another more for some uh, solidification? And on x ties against solid, or equivalently on the right solidification. Uh, so, so you see that also these uh, solidifications of these guys uh, will be a small picture product of proximity. In fact, canonically. Um, any assumption on S, like S should be non empty or infinite, or you should be. You uh, sorry, have... yes, 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 yes. Infinite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, canonically, one way to write an isomorphism is that if you write S as a limit <coughs> on finite sets as N, uh, with surjective transition maps, that this will actually I read isomorphically uh, just the limit of these three guys on the end. Uh, where, I mean, these are all finite free being groups. The surjective transition maps, so it's easy to see that any such limit would be abstractly isomorphic to a product of copies of Z. Uh, so in our previous uh, way of setting up the solid theory, we were actually taking this formula as a starting point uh, for defining what a solid guy is. So we were just on all the generators of our category, all these here join S's for profile sets S, we were by hand declaring what their solidification should be, and we were declaring it to the English limit, and then we were checking by hand that this gives a value from theory. But this, this argument is actually much harder than uh, 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 the way I've set it up now. Right? And sometimes the definition of what a solid group is much cleaner, and then this really becomes a computation. Okay, so uh, uh, let me quickly give a sketch of the other one. So we have our S, and it's written as this limit uh, 
uh, of finite sets, uh, assume that all the transition are subjective. And <clears throat> I inductively, uh, choose, well, first the section I zero from S taken to S zero back into S. Then, uh, on all elements of S S one that are not in the image of I zero to zero. So, so you, you pick the first splitting on on S zero, and then. <clears throat> If you project back down to S1 in particular, you've already some elements of S1, which you've already lifted to S. But then there's new elements of S1 that I didn't yet have. Uh, and so on then I pick a new section. Uh, so sometimes on S1 minus S0, so to say. Um, and so then jointly, I these two things together now define for me a section from S1 uh, into S. Um. <clears throat> Which on some elements is given by projecting to S0 and then taking the lift you already have there, and on the other elements you can make a new choice. And then, and then you continue. Okay. So in this way, what in particular you will get uh, is a countable sequence of elements in S, right? Because in the, the union of all these uh, maps is just a countable subset of S, but it will certainly be dense. <laughs> and so uh, and so let's also enumerate the elements so enumerate come on that n is you start enumerating a zero so then you start enumerating the elements of S1 that weren't in S the image of the section in zero. So then the elements of S2 that weren't in S1 and so on. And so uh, we get a map uh, D uh, from P, which is some of the free guy. Uh, on this copy of n towards e on s that <laughs> on a zero uh, this is given by a zero <laughs> but on some higher as n minus as n minus one it's given by the difference of the nest induced by I n. So I n is some map, uh, some section you chose well, on this guy. Uh, but then you can also first project to uh, uh, you can project at n minus one. <clears throat> and then choose take map at I n minus one base. Um, this carefully crafted map will be the map that will induce you as an Okay.
I mean, actually, if you're careful, we'll see. Like in the end, if you want such an isomorphism, you will should get such an isomorphism here. And for this, but canonically, it should be this thing. And so then, in order for it to produce such an isomorphism, you somehow have to produce such an isomorphism. And then, if you carefully think about how you would actually go about doing that, someone inductive, they have to, have to choose new basal elements. Uh, then, this is precisely what you want to end up doing. <coughs> And so now the argument is actually very similar to an argument we already did. Uh, namely, we uh, they're all very similar diagrams. So we have this, uh, or this was fluid as a common. And here we have f point by the other thing. Then we have our carefully prompted G here. <coughs> And then um, let's be effective, and then we fill the system of actually factors. Um, where again, giving such a map is, means I give a null sequence of maps from each on S to S. And so the null sequence I consider here, the null sequence of the maps from each on S to itself. Uh, so you start with the identity, which we have to do because we want the splitting here. And then take I uh, predict to the zero one and take uh, take the splitting so pi n is a point I mean, yeah, so, uh, pi n is that from S n. And okay, so when I write this map, I mean the maps induced on three condensed inverse. <clears throat> and it turns out that because some of these maps approximate the identity here, uh, the same is true on three condensed inverse. And uh, so then this guy here, this corresponds to the null sequence of the classic differences. So that is I zero pi zero, and then I one pi one minus I zero pi zero, and then I n pi n minus one pi n <clears throat> And then if you think about what these uh, differences are actually doing, you realize that they are actually only changing something uh, on a small part, and oh, okay. I would mess it up if I try to say it orally, but you can check that you've exactly crafted things so that uh, this success different is will factor over the image of this net G. And so it's the idea is again that you take the identity here and try to write it as an infinite sum of maps, all of which factor over the sum of And so the, the yeah. And for this, you somehow use the sequence of endo functors from zero join s, which are somehow factor over something of finite range because the zero join s ends. And then uh, there you can do it. And so, and then the argument is just the same as before. Well, we checked that t becomes isomorphic to the small product of the of t. Uh, critical here is, however, that uh, you really have a light profinite set. I mean, so if I were to set up a series of solid degree groups, take an alternate density groups, then the condition I gave that just talked about null sequences wouldn't be enough because somehow it will never see this condensation of participation of the integers. Uh, you're really using that you can still understand this while it's countable dense subset.
All right. Okay, so uh, to sum up, uh, we have that solid inside of all lines and then here. Uh, so stable under civilian, stable under all limits and columns, and so on. Limits and columns in particular include terms and post terms. Um, uh, you have a compact projective generator. A single compact projective generator. Which is on uh, this full product of the integers. And it's actually internally projected. Uh, and in fact, if you tender it with itself, it becomes uh, isomorphic to itself. Product next um, and also, uh, and the solid, uh, that's being used to solid. If it's only at the point condition holes, uh, which is what we took as our original definition, uh, if it only is all like for finite sets. And uh, all maps uh, mm -hmm. CC from S into N. Uh, <clears throat> there's this unique extension of G. <clears throat> so I get from uh, the free guy on S. Um, which is the limit well, S definitely meant here, right? As, as the three guy. Uh -huh. And the extension you want is this. So sorry, maybe I'm, I I I misheard. So you said that this is an internally compact projective, right? It is internally compact projective. Yeah. I think. I mean that's already true for P the settlement P and the to being groups, and then also mm -hmm. for for its solidification. What's really kind of new is that it's really a generator now because these other generates that we previously have, they don't actually give you any new objects. Uh, I mean, the only thing that uh, that I didn't say before in this theorem is that uh, this thing characterizes I mean, just a equivalence here, and the forward direction is split because if m is solid, then of course uh, so map from z join s maps uh, factors of its solidification. Uh, for the converse, <coughs> um, you just observe that if you uh, you can always find some subjection from three guys on S's to M, but they all extend uniquely to the solidification, so you get direct sum of such things from subjecting onto M. So you find the same uh, standard for the kernel and then stability in the co kernel gives you that M is solid. Okay. Uh, so that's the 
following this part of the last question here. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's also uh, formal, but we to give it. So, I mean, you can always, as a life function density being group, you can always uh, present it as a co kernel of that map, like so. What <clears throat> But then, this uh, steps to some implication. When there exists a unique extension here. And So something like this maps those solidifications. And um, <clears throat> then also because solid guys map uniquely, the composite is actually zero. And maybe didn't, I didn't say it this way. But I mean, I think okay. you can do it. You can do it by taking m to be anything, and then you 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 go from the universal property for Z s to the same one for any m because you represent the solidification of m as a for kernel. So to the fact that any map from m from other m, I mean m prime to your thing, factors your matrix through the solidification, and then by, by then it is clear that uh, this is the same as being. Uh, so I think this also presents M as the core kernel of, of this map. <clears throat> it is clear it's a direct factor. Oh. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm getting a lot of time, so uh, let me just uh, uh, give one kind of philosophical way of thinking about this solid condition as it's phrased at the very end. The <laughs> so condition was that all null sequences are summable, and something that we get out of this is that one can always integrate against uh, a certain kinds of measures. So uh, one can also think of Z of John S is actually the same thing as the internal home from the continuous functions from S to Z, back to Z. Uh, because the continuous functions, they have the co limit of the functions on each of finite sets, just try to figure out if you do get a single limit description. And so, from this perspective, these are some kind of uh, z-value measures. And so, this means that whenever you have a map from S into M, where M is solid, and whenever you have a measure on S, then I mean, this map induces by what I said, uh, the thing you can appear in this sense, the measure mu to something here. So we can, and so this map is some of the map that tends from the other mu to the integral of g against mu. So some of the light condensed being group is solid if uh, whenever you have a map from some profile set into M and some C value of measure on S, then you can form the integral. Uh, one thing that I should stress here is that this characterization of solid here at the end, uh, I only talk about homes, not about internal homes. Yeah? So in the, in the first characterization I gave when I talked about <laughs> sequences, I had to talk about the internal home being isomorphism. 
here it's a Thomas <clears throat> All right, I'm out of time, so let me kind of stop it. Questions? Why is the composition is zero on the record? Because these nodes are zero, so the certification is also zero. I am slightly confused about my process diagram is why it's still a presentation of M. That's although I saw the case, sorry, maybe I put it first. I mean, you, you definitely get a right exactness with the certification because certification is right exact. Um, but then, and you definitely always have the back here, but then the observation that there exists this map back, uh, which is zero here, means that this actually retracts. Uh, so maybe I should rather say n is a retract of its solidification by this argument. Uh, but retracts of solid guys are solid. So, so. So if there is a single compact projection generator, then the category of solid abelian groups is uh, equal to the category of nodules over some length. Right. So yeah, so, so, so it's, uh, right. So I mean, uh, I will discuss this more next time. So they, one can give some purely synthetic algebraic descriptions of what the category of solid abelian groups is um, without talking about any coherence or anything. Um, and yeah, so I mean, you can especially say what the morphisms of this product of these are, right? Like, so the, Product of the n of the direct sum of n of z. So they're just infinite matrices, which are in every row, they're eventually zero. Are you going to give a similar uh, new uh, way to define a uh, uh, new, new definition for a liquid modules? Or this new formalism is available only for a solid setting? The, the question whether one can also characterize the liquid vector spaces uh, in a similar way by mapping. Yes. I think it should be possible, and we're currently figuring out the details of whether it works. Let's see. We save a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs>